Now I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh the street vending in the food truck. What was that experience like? Like I seen like documentaries or different people trying to do like uh food trucks and stuff like that. What how was that? Well, it's a lot different than how it is now. I can tell you that post COVID, you know. I obviously was doing it pre COVID, so you know, you ain't have all these restrictions, you know, you can pretty much, you know, um you know, pull up to your spot, set up and do your thing and um you know and, and just sold everything right from the food truck but um now you know now post covid i'm not sure exactly how the business is i know it's not as big as how it was pre covid um just because that the economy's not back how it was you know pre covid you know it's still some things that i'm dealing with here at the restaurant with people with remote work and stuff like that and you know some people out some people not so but um the overhead off the food truck the overhead is definitely a lot less um compared to the brick and mortar um you know uh you know just pulling up you know for like lunch the good the the disadvantage is is you know you miss a lot of opportunity just being on the food truck because the food truck isn't out all the time you know that's if you're just solely on the truck which is how i was at the time so you know you go out there for a few hours, then you break down and leave. And then you go get ready for the next day. But, you know, if a customer come looking for you, then you ain't out there. Then it's like a missed opportunity, uh, you know, for a customer, you know. But um, but the brick and mortar is cool because it's like you have a stationary location. People know where you at. You open these days out the week from this time to that time, you know. Um, so in our case, we're open 11 to 8, Monday through Saturday, closed on Sunday. So, um, so yeah, so, I mean, that's just a little bit about the, you know, the comparison between the food truck business and, and the storefront. Oh, okay, man. I appreciate you breaking it down. Now it come to me. I was thinking about, uh, I don't know if you've seen it. It was a TV show called the shy. My man, he had a food truck and they was getting it. You know what I'm saying? It made it so interesting from the owner perspective. Cause you always on the outside. Like, let me get this, let me get that. But it showed the other right. side of it. So. Yeah, like the food truck festivals was cool, man, because you can pull up to the food truck festival. It'll be thousands of people out there, you know, hundreds of other food trucks and, you know, everybody got lines, you know. But it also depends on the weather. It depends on, you know, how long the event been, in, you know, going on and the type of following they have. If They're going to bring out a lot of traffic. So, you know, some events you go to, you know, uh, it might not have a lot of people, but have a whole lot of vendors. So, you know, the competition is crazy, you know, but, um, but, um, but yeah, it's cool though. It's definitely cool. Um, in addition to the food truck, we also got a smoker, um, on a trailer that we pull behind the pickup truck. We set up on site at people's houses, businesses, and we provide on site catering services, you know, so, <clears throat> you know, um, uh, so the food truck is good when you're setting up and you're going out there to sell. But, you know, the catering point is um, is almost better because, you know, how many people you cooking for. You get a deposit up front. You know, the balance will be due the day of, you know, how much food to bring, you know, what you bringing, you know. So it kind of mitigates your risk a little bit more. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that breakdown, man. I know the viewers are going to uh, appreciate it as well. Let me see. I wanted to ask you now, are you thinking about opening up uh, more locations in that city or even going back to different cities? You know, like you say, you live in Cleveland, you live in New York, Virginia. Is it any other places that you have thought about, you know, opening up another location? You know what, something that I'm, I'm actually working on, hopefully um... – you know, I plan for it to be live, um, hopefully probably within the next couple of weeks or so. But, you know, I was um, working on uh, I'm, I'm about to launch my own rib chat game that you can go right to your phone and download right from the app store on a, on a iPhone or Android. And it's basically like like a, a replica of the rib chat, you know, here to where, you know, you got your employee, you know, the customers are coming up. You directing your finger, you know, to make the orders, and um, you know, I guess it's essentially in a way of digitizing my restaurant, you know, and then within the app, within the game, it'll be in-app purchases to expand your menu, 
you know, and then um, as you continue to build on the game, you know, it'll be other uh, in-app purchase opportunities, customizing your restaurant. So I guess to answer your question, the physical location requires probably a little bit more or a lot more uh management and now we're dealing with a lot of the inflation and everything and the cost of everything just going up so you really kind of got to outweigh and then still you open up a physical location you only got you know you got one physical lo location now you got two physical locations but then you got a whole lot more management but with the game and digitizing my restaurant you know, I'd be able to, you know, anywhere from anybody from around the country, around the world can just go right to the app store, download the game, play the game. If you got kids, if you like to play restaurant games, I mean, the gaming industry is is crazy right now. So. So maybe this is like a little way that I can kind of digitize my my physical restaurant, you know, as we yeah, open yeah, yeah, that's dope, King, man. I look forward to that game for sure. And like you say, uh, people can become involved worldwide, globally. I just got back from Africa, man. You could put some of our brothers and sisters over there on to some ribs, you know what I'm saying? And then they could su show support and learn more about our culture and how we eat because they uh, definitely are intrigued by a lot of the stuff that we do. So, Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to ask you. Um, one of the articles I read it had mentioned that um, you were serving the homeless. You was help feeding people in the community. Yeah, that was right. Um, in twenty twenty, when everything started to shut down, and um, you know, the states and cities and everything was shutting down. The world was shutting down, and I was able to partner with the city of New Haven. That's where I'm located at now, and um. And, uh, and yeah, so they basically just, you know, they paid for us to deliver, prepare and deliver, you know, anywhere from, say, like 50 to 75 meals a day to different sites to feed the homeless, you know, during these times. And also during it, it was at a discounted rate. Um, so it wasn't for free, but it wasn't at the at the at the retail price. But it was still something good because, you know, it allowed me to do something good and and, and um you know, deliver meals to the homeless people, um, as well as bring some of my staff off the bench because I had to cut hours a little bit because during this COVID transition, um, I didn't lay anybody off, but I did have to scale back hours a little bit. But this allowed me to kind of bring a couple people in, help with the orders, get them out, and, um, you know, and then it's also doing something good for the, um, for the local people in the community. You know, and then they did like COVID testing there and, you know, uh, clothes and stuff like that, free clothes for them and everything. So it was like one big community thing. Oh, okay, man. That's dope, man. I definitely salute you for that, for giving back to the community, especially at a time like now, man. We we really, really need more people like you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Let's see. Uh, I think I covered pretty much everything. Okay, I got about two more questions left. Um. Number one, the social media, uh, website, Instagram, Facebook, you know, if people want to follow you, if they want to um, get the game when it come out, if they want to order the dry, the dry rub, the barbecue sauce, um, let them know how they can get in contact with you. Yeah, you could always check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Just type in RickyD'sRibShack.com. Um, you could also follow um, the game page, which is the Rib Shack game. And... Um, you know, we're on all the platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, our website is rickydsribshack.com. So you can go there and check in and, um, you know, some see some of the things that we have available. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I pretty much covered everything. So I guess my last question is, you got any other events or products or any other ventures, you know, related to the Rib Shack or not? that you wanted to uh, share with the people? You know, I mean, the Rib Shack, building on the physical location, building out the digital infrastructure for the game. Um, you know, right now, you know, our phone and, and emails is uh, is blowing up uh, for catering events and stuff as we move into, like, the spring and the summer times. So, um, you know, we're going to be out. You know, we're going to have the restaurant going, the catering going, and, um, 
and everything going, you know. So. Yeah, oh yeah, no doubt, man. So I want to thank you again. It's definitely been an honor. Good to see you again, and and you doing something positive and something major, man. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, you will continue to inspire people and do great things. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. It's been another episode of Taye Speaks. So until next time, family. Peace. Peace. Appreciate you.